Before we get to Carol, I, I want to give you some highlights from this Blaze Media and uh, the Blaze.com story. Biden's phony numbers mass true economic pain. The official government numbers in the U.S. economy have been contradictory and confusing for quite a while now. What is clear upon closer examination is that the federal government's overspending and overregulation are doing serious damage to the economy, and we have yet to see the worst results of those policies. The unemployment increase seems to contradict recent signs that the economy has been weakening. In addition to the conflicting rise in unemployment, other signs of deterioration include stagnant retail sales, a slowing of consumer spending, weak industrial production, manufacturing orders, increasing consumer debt depressed by new housing starts, falling annual earnings of full-time employees, and rising commodity prices. The Federal Reserve Chairman uh, Jerome Powell admitted he believes the White House has been cooking the books. This is the Fed chair stating last week, you have payroll jobs still coming in strong, even though there's an argument they may be a bit overstated. The only job growth in the U.S. is for illegal aliens. Listen to that. The only job growth in the u.s are for those illegal aliens who will work for below minimum wage which also explains why inflation hasn't spiked in the past year as millions of illegal aliens were hired legally resident american workers saw no job increase in the past year and unlawful residents willing to accept uh wages americans can't are dragging uh, everything down in the wage category. With uh, employment conditions for American workers stagnant at best, the job market is another indicator that the economic growth uh, is slowing and the Federal Reserve should lower interest rates to reduce its suppression of economic activity. However, they decided not to because it will, it will spike inflation again. The markets have already priced three expected interest rate reductions for the year. However, suggesting a a correction is in order. Even so, the stock market stayed steady after the Fed's interest rate announcement, with the Dow falling slightly and the S&P 500 and NASDAQ rising to new record highs. Economist Robert uh, uh, Jensky calculates that the S&P 500 is currently overvalued by 34%. If investors decide the market is near peak and start selling, taking their profits before prices fall, there is more trouble. This overspending continues from the federal government as well. In the first eight months of the current fiscal year, the federal government has already accumulated more than $1.02 trillion in additional debt, with a staggering deficit of $348 billion last month alone. Investors reportedly believe the U.S. economy is about to enjoy a significant expansion because of AI. Uh, That's boosting uh, the stock markets, the shares in tech companies, chip makers, and even utilities. The government's stimulus injection may be waning and the Fed's interest rate hikes starting to bite, as indicated by the slowing housing and manufacturing production. Higher interest rates hinder business from investing in production and consumers from spending on goods that support those businesses. Additionally, the Biden administration has implemented a regulatory program that will directly cost the economy $3.95 trillion in 2025 and indirectly result in a staggering $75.05 trillion in opportunity costs for 2025 alone that might take a bite uh no matter what ai is going to do carol roth is here with us eden pure is back with their famous thunderstorm air purifier it's their top seller air purifier that quickly destroys viruses odors mold and so much more With thousands of five-star reviews, you know it works. Any smell will vanish after just a few seconds of the thunderstorm being plugged in. Odors, litter boxes... 
trash can cigarette smokes, dirty diapers. Wow, I don't want to visit that house. The powerful thunderstorm sends out O3 molecules that seek out and destroy odors. I have these in my house. They're great. The molecules go uh, behind and under furniture. Nothing can hide from the thunderstorm. Best of all, no filters to buy over and over again, saving you money. Start enjoying your home again and get several thunderstorms. Right now, you can save $200 on an Eden Pure Thunderstorm 3-pack for the whole home protection. You get three units for under $200. Put one in your basement, bedroom, family room, kitchen, wherever you need the air to be clean. Go to EdenPureDeals.com. EdenPureDeals.com. Use the promo code BECK and save. Carol. Are we beginning to see all of the signs of the wheels coming off of this thing? I think we've been seeing the signs of the wheels coming off of this thing for quite some time, um, and they're sort of hanging on by a thread. Now, certainly a lot of the numbers that are put forth uh, are meant to window dress and say, oh, no, look, the wheels are still turning, and they're doing just fine, and they're going to last for a while. But we have seen cracks. And when you peel back the onion and you look at things like the deficits to GDP, which are about two times the historic average, at a time when they're telling us there's an expansion, we know there's something wrong. Because normally when you have an expanding economy, that means you're taking in more revenue at, at the government level, and that means that you're running less of a deficit because you have more you know, money input. Correct. What's happening right. now is the Biden administration has flipped that on its head, and they're using deficits to window dress the appearance that we have growth. And we're seeing that start to crack because even that you know, window dressed growth is starting to come down. We saw the first quarter GDP come in almost a percentage point lower than expectations on the first reading. The second reading was even lower. So now as is at the second reading, we're at 1.3% um, for the first quarter, and we're expecting a third reading. And we know things keep getting revised and revised. So all of the you know, appearances that they're putting forth to make it seem like everything looks great, we've seen those cracks and they're just becoming larger and larger. So do you think that there's any way possible that anything, uh, excuse the pun here, trumps the economy? I mean, they always say in elections, you know, it's the economy, stupid. And no matter how you window dress this, everyone knows I don't have as much money or my money doesn't go as far as it used to. And I'm having a hard time keeping up at almost every level. This is happening. So this is an interesting question. There was a, a Monmouth poll that came out yesterday that showed you know, far and away that the economy was the biggest issue, you know, number one issue on people's minds. But there is a disconnect by party. And obviously, when you have the, the Republican side, uh, and, and I would think to some extent the independents as well, there's more of a connection with the, with the fiscal reality that's going on, and it becomes, you know, we cannot afford literally four more years of that. There's a disconnect from the Democrats who don't believe in uh, math and reality anyway. And so even though they may be hurting uh, personally, they're going to make excuses and say that it's for you know, any sort of litany of other reasons and it doesn't have anything to do with these specific policies that we know have driven these outcomes, you know, whether it's things like the American Rescue Plan and they direct stimulus that's literally called stimulus, that overstimulated the economy and caused inflation, they're going to tell you, oh, no, look, inflation has come down, uh, even though they're still going to the same grocery stores, the same gas stations, having to pay the same rent, and they're believing and buying into the gaslighting. So that's my concern is when you have you know, so many people who are decoupled from reality and being fed this propaganda and this gaslighting, oh. and they're willing to eat it you know, for uh, basically you know, their, their cult, that that is not going to show up in the polls the way that it should if we were operating you know, with some sort of normal baseline. Um, Carol, I'm going to take a quick break early here because I don't want to interrupt you on this uh, petrodollar thing. Because I have seen stories that say this is true. This is uh, stories that say it wasn't true. I don't think there ever was a 
there wasn't a concrete deal. It was more of a handshake with Saudi Arabia with the petrodollar, wasn't it? Or did we have That's a written right. deal? So, so yeah, okay. I was surprised when I saw this as well. You know, I wrote about this in You'll Own Nothing. We have a whole chapter on it. And there was a deal put in place, but never once did I come across anything that said we have a specific expiration. But we know right. deals that you know, are made can be shifted and changed at any point in time. And I think that's Correct. the point we want to talk about. Okay, so we'll do that next because the petrodollar, if the world goes off the petrodollar, uh, that, is, uh, that is the beginning of the end of the dollar. It's just a matter of time. Uh, and what are people replacing it with? And so far, central banks are not replacing it with any currency at all. Carol, explain why the petrodollar is so important. All right, so there's a story that was going around last week that the uh, the Saudis had ended this agreement that had been put in place in the 70s. So what happened was that when the U.S. went off the gold standard, they were very concerned over what was going to happen. So they created this uh, secret delegation that went to Saudi Arabia as part of a diplomatic tour. And there was a lot of chaos going on at that time. So not only did we go off the gold standard, there was a, an oil embargo put in place by the uh, Arab oil exporters. It sent the price of oil sky high. So the big objective was basically they, the U.S. didn't want crude oil, you know, energy, which is obviously really what fuels growth around the world, to become mm -hmm. an economic weapon. And they knew, okay, well, now we're off, uh, you know, off the, the gold standard. We've got the fiat currency. Wouldn't it be great to have somebody you know, finance our deficits? So what they did is they went to the Saudis and they said, okay, look, you come, you take all, you know, we're going to, you're going to agree to basically price oil in dollars. That, that's that. around the world, the oil is going to be priced in dollars. And you're going to have all of these excess, all this excess money. We want you to plow that back into U.S. treasuries. Everything that, you know, you get in that you don't spend, you want to plow that back into treasuries. And why did they want that? Because obviously that helps the U.S. finance their deficits at a, a very cheap rate. And the Saudis said, okay, we'll do that, but, you know, what we want in, in return is, you know, basically some economic and military support. And so they made this, this deal that was brokered. Um, the interesting part is there was a secret piece of it, and that was that the Saudis did not want everyone to know that they had this huge uh, treasury stockpile. So for more than four days... Why? Decades, wait, wait, wait. What? Why? <laughs> why didn't they? Because they didn't want everyone to know that this was sort of the underpinnings of the deal and how closely they were in okay. bed with the U.S. and, and the you know, US. This okay. is, Yeah, that this is this is what they Got did. It. So this was actually okay. uncovered by a, a Bloomberg report. So for, for four, 41 years, what the U.S. Treasury did when they broke, broke out what central banks um, held the U.S. Treasuries, and you can go and see, oh, China holds this, Japan holds this. They lumped Saudi Arabia in with 14 other nations. So basically, you wow. could see, oh, we had cut this special deal, and it looks like now that there's all this, you know, wonderful demand for treasuries around the world, and it, you know, it was kind of unclear that there was this alliance going on. So what does that do? It creates a massive demand for the treasuries because not only are the Saudis in there as huge buyers, but when you have you know, on a sort of a de facto basis the U.S. or the uh, oil being priced in U.S. dollars, then every other central bank is also going to want to make sure that they have a stockpile of a dollar equivalent security that if they need dollars they can cash in. And of course, uh, as opposed to holding actual dollars, when you hold the treasury, you do get some income, right? You get an interest rate. Right. So basically, this has created you know huge demand for treasuries. It means that the interest you know was artificially suppressed by that demand, um, and that you know the U.S. government was able to finance their deficits. It also also meant that trade around the world was done, you know, in U.S. dollars. So not only are these central banks holding them in the reserves, but there's all this trade that's happening in U.S. dollars. So this actually worked out, you know, for, for quite some time. Um, the Fed holding, it, you know, basically the world's reserve currency and managing it, they held the U.S. dollar fairly stable. And when you saw the price of gas go up, 
um, that they would, you know, loosen monetary policy, and when it was too low, they would tighten it so that it would stay in some sort of a range. And sometimes that was at odds with what was going on domestically, but as the holder of the world's reserve currency, that was their job. And then, so hang on um, just a second. Stop, stop here for a second, because yeah. I, I just want to make the point. This is right now where we're about to see the change, and it's not happening now. It's already happened. We, when we got off the gold standard, we promised the world we'll never put ourselves, you know, absolutely first and go off and do crazy spending and, uh, you know, and just break everything for America. And that's why it was at odds sometimes, the Fed's policies were at odds with the United States policy or, or um, wants and needs because they had to balance it for the world. And then what happened, Carol? Yeah, so the, for, the, for the economic wonks out there, that's called the Triff and Dilemma. You, know, you sometimes have to make these trade-offs between what happens domestically and what happens internationally. But what happened, if we go back, come back to today, is that the Fed has managed to hold the dollar um, uh, not stable, either for the world or domestically. So it's not like they even made the trade-off. They just abandoned it altogether. But uh, going back to 2005, um, they decided when the price of oil shot up due to China's increase in demand, Hurricane Katrina, a whole bunch of things, that they just weren't going to play this game anymore. And that's when things started to crack. Then we had the Great Recession financial crisis and, and so on and so forth. And, you know, the, the U.S. government continuing to run these huge deficits and just you know, creating a, a really challenging situation economically. So the big issue, if you are these countries around the world that now have everything priced in dollars, all of your major commodities, because it's not just oil yep. at this point, you know, it, it then started extending into to food, everybody's trading in dollars, we're in the pole position. When you have these, these huge swings in the dollar, that means that threatens you as a nation because you know, now you may not be able to afford energy or you, you may not be able to afford the food for your country. That's a, that's a national security issue. And so countries were, getting, countries were getting sick of that. We weaponized the U.S. dollar, and at the end of the day, they're starting to move away from it, which threatens our ability to have cheap financing and our standard of living. And so the Saudis did not break a deal. We've broken the deal long ago, and they're just all doing what would normally be done. It's no longer good for me. It's got to be good for both of us. And so they didn't stop the deal. They're just naturally moving away. And it's the money is going to gold, not other currencies at this point, correct? Correct. You got it. Yeah. Nailed it.